college recruiting is a mess. We'll break that down with Tim Sackett next on the Rec Tech Podcast. Hey again, Rec Techies. Welcome to the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through technology-inspired conversations. Attracting talent through recruiting technology is changing rapidly, and that's why this show exists. Today's episode is a recruiter edition. The podcast is sponsored by HR Lancers, the Upwork for HR. If your company is looking for recruiting or HR help on a part-time project or contract basis, head over to hrlancers.com to post a job or project. Our brow is available for freelancers looking for work right now in TA or HR. It's free and easy, hrlancers.com. Tim Sackett is one of the co-hosts of the HR Famous Podcast and president of HRU Technical Resources based in Michigan. Tim, good to see you again. Um, yeah. By the way, I think your next podcast should be called HR Infamous. <laughs> because? You rant and uh, tell horror stories uh, <laughs> your HR days. We well, could definitely do that. We've, we've shared quite a few of uh, some of those stories as well. <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't uh, listened to HR Famous yet, uh, listeners, go out there and put it on your list. It's definitely one of my, my favorites from a, uh, a listening standpoint. And I uh, love hearing uh, uh, Zach and Jay, Jay Lee and uh, Chris Dunn talk about HR stuff. A lot of fun. So, Tim, you wrote yeah. an article, interesting article, a few weeks back over on timsackett.com. It sums up the frustration of college recruiting. And um, that really uh, caught my interest. I've been I've long kind of felt your frustrations as well over the years. And uh, let me read a quote from that to get us started here. So here we go, audience. So it says, if you want to hire an upcoming college grad for a job you have, it's a freaking nightmare mostly. First off, you have to find out from each college or university who they actually work with and to which platform they are sending their kids to. Handshake is the big one, but not everyone works with them. And as an employer, they're kind of difficult to work with. The reality is employers just want a database of students. We want to log in, pay whatever fee you ask, and search by the university, year, major, location, et cetera. We are simple people with simple needs. So uh, did you get any pushback on this article, first of all, Tim? No, I, I mean, over, overwhelmingly, um, you know, that I thought, I think that people were feeling that pain. I think they really felt that. I got some pushback a little bit from... By the way, the COO of Handshake was a reader of the blog. I didn't know, right? Because you, you get to a point when you have like 25,000 subscribers, you just don't, you don't, you have no idea who's reading, who's not, right. what gets shared. And so with, within like 10 minutes of it going live, I get a message from him. <laughs> Let's talk. I love it. <laughs> Which is great because I, I mean, again, you and I are both super fans of the recruiting technology world. And so when I share frustration, it's not out of, disrespect to any program because I know they're trying to solve it. Um, it's very much, hey, I'm a user and this should be better, right? Years ago, LinkedIn and I had this kind of love-hate relationship before they finally understood I was a daily user and was trying to make them better, right? And then their product marketing people finally kind of warmed up. But um, and then the, obviously I got I'm, I came down pretty hard on career services and rightly so I should because they're really the problem in all of this. We have kids going out there, families going out there, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get you know kids to get a degree. And at the end of the day, before they graduate or even a little bit after they graduate, they're trying to find one more alley to make just a little bit more money off these kids, you know? And it's, it's really, it's, it's disheartening in a lot of ways because it could run so much better. I've met some great, college career services people that do believe and understand like how this is broken, but they, there's just, there's no it, higher ed change is so slow. There's no way for them to get out. And then we try to like that. We like, we love to believe that higher ed is a nonprofit. And the reality is, is they're not, they're big business. They go to try to continue to get more and more money to build, build bigger and bigger endowments in every single part of the of higher ed is is a, is a kind of a money maker at some point, or they're trying to figure that out, you know. Well, my daughter's going to college uh, in a couple of weeks, so uh, this is even more <laughs> important to me. But uh, so, how does it work with handshake? Do they yeah. do they pay the employer? What are they, is there a rev share there? Do you know? No, so like, so I mean, I mean how does the school so, make money? So off let's it? So, like classically, here's what would happen, right? So we know traditionally to 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 hire somebody at a university. 
the, the, the traditional way was you had to show up on campus at one of their career fairs, right? And then, or some of them were advanced enough where you could, you know, fax them, email them, do whatever. Some of them even had some platforms that you could input a job position you had, and then they would post it in some kind of system online, whether that was for direct permanent hire or even like internships. But the, the, the big one was you had to show up on campus. That was, that was almost like if you weren't willing to play and show up on campus and spend that money, time, and resources, then you don't deserve our students. So that's kind of the traditional. Handshake came in, and there's some other ones out there like them, and said, oh, you know what? Employers, especially small or mid-enterprise employers, just don't have the resources to show up on all these campuses and recruit your students. Maybe there's a better way. By the way, all of the students also hate going to career fairs, right? So we have employers and students both hate going to career fairs. <laughs> we have universities foreseeing career fairs. And Handshake came, you know, and that kind of, that tech came through and said, hey, what if we made this digital and employers could post their jobs and kids could put in their profile and we all just meet a la LinkedIn, right? Wouldn't this be great? Well, it was great, but what all these companies found out, the technology companies found out was, they could never get the lion's share of kids to kind of go onto their platform because career services kind of controlled what they knew. So since we're in this, right, in the middle of all of this as practitioners and pros, we tend to believe or over, over believe that these kids actually kind of understand how to find a job. They don't. They have, they're completely idiots when it comes to finding a job. Which and so, so the question, to, why, are we, why aren't they teaching more of this in the actual college, right? Right. The, no, there should be like, before you graduate, there's a certain classes that you should have to take. Finding a job, like, you know, whatever that might be. And you prep, yeah, resume and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. And they don't do really any of that. There's some schools that have some things here and there, but for the most part, they don't. Now, every career services office would say, no, no, that's why we're here. You come in just come in. Well, they could never, if they actually had, like me, I am by, I'm right by Michigan State. There's 40,000 undergrad students. The, the career services couldn't handle 10% of those students coming in. So they, they already know that such a sm tiny, small amount of these kids are actually coming. Right. And most kids now will just go out to whoever's going to advertise the most. Career Builder, LinkedIn, Career Builder, or not career, uh, uh, Indeed, um, LinkedIn, probably Zip Recruiter now, places like that, right? Um, and traditionally, you know, career builder monster, but that's, that's where they would try to go. And then, or just, they might go to their career services, not understanding that like, oh my gosh, I went to career services. I show up every day. There's not very many jobs. I can't believe it. And they're getting probably less than 1% of the jobs. <laughs> so, um, the middleware comes in and says, Hey, can we, can we do better? And, but the reality is, is career services doesn't want to lose their revenue from all these employers. So now they have to find a way to cut handshake and these companies have to find a way to say, well, how do we grease the pockets of career services, but also then make a product that both employers and kids are going to be happy with. And at the end of the day, the only way to do that is, is to kind of talk career services into you get on our platform and somehow we'll, we'll ensure that, you know, we keep, you know, money keeps flowing to you. Now I, but honestly, I haven't talked to the handshake. I mean, I'm, we keep trying to set up this meeting, right, um, to to kind of talk with the handshake folks. So I can, I, I mean, I've seen their product, you know, a couple of different times, but it's been can a few years. Can you search resumes on that? Um, you can search profiles and then kids can upload their resume. So, okay. but here's the thing with handshake and the frustration I think employers have is they have a trust score. So like if I go to log in to handshake as an employer, I immediately have a trust score. By the way, this trust score is pretty low. So when a career services person, when I reach out to them and say, hey, I want to have access to your kids, Handshake is telling them, oh, Tim Sackett has a low trust score. You probably don't want to connect with them. Well, the only way I can raise my trust score is by attending these career service events and, and doing all of these kinds of things. And then little by little, your trust score gets raised up. That's to the point. Well, it's, no, it's, I mean, so it's, it's super, it's super sketch from that standpoint because it's really, and again, but like, I get it from the tech side point. They're like, well, wait a minute, we want to build this technology and we want to connect employers and students, but you know, there's all the other the, behind the scenes, like the big giant elephant sitting in the middle room is what about the money? How do we make money? How, not only does the technology company make money, but how do we, how do we ensure career services also makes money? Yeah. So you have these two kind of vying for, 
you know, money that they have to make, or they believe they have to make. Now, again, obviously career services shouldn't be having to make money, but they believe they do um, because it's, that's that empire building mentality, right? So if I'm a career services and I become self-funded, guess what? Protects my job. I get to hire more people, blah, blah, blah. It kind of goes down the road. I would love to sit in a room with like um, university presidents and have this kind of discussion because you know, some probably they have little understanding of like how little career services really does to their student for their students. And at the end of the day, they're the decisions they're making are forcing these career services to be, you know, kind of ATM machines that are for the university. And again, they're probably not making much money, but it's, you know, everyone's livelihood is kind of has built on it. But anyways, so what, so, what, so then you, as an as employer, so I went through this entire process, right? We were hiring recruiters to come work directly for us at our company. Right. And, you and I went, wanted to reach out with Michigan State and Michigan and all these local universities and go, hey, we want to hire your kids and, you know, and have them come here. And we're going to teach them this great skill and blah, blah, blah. And so I started to reach out. I reached out to 20 local universities within 100 miles of where we, where we work, right? Looking for local kids in the Lansing area six or seven of like the B level schools, I'll call them, right? Like those state schools without the big name or they don't even have a name. Immediately they reach back out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't, you know, here's, here's your access. And now you, now you, our kids can see your job that has open and you can also search our kids and you can send them messages and that works great. By the way, I love B school kids. So this is perfect for me. Um, but the other bigger schools, um, universities that have tens of twenties of thousands of, 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 you know, Michigan's and Michigan state, central Michigan's, Western Michigan's. I had to send personal notes around their system and sometimes to the highest levels of career services and even beyond career services to get them to even respond to me. And then even then some wouldn't even give me access because they're like, well, you're a staffing company. I go, yeah, I understand that. I'm not posting an IT job for General Motors, right? <laughs> I'm posting a position to work directly for me in that your must, backyard. With the hell out of, out of staffing firms like you. Oh Maybe. yeah, I mean, that, and that's a like discrimination in, in the industry of you know with, with Indeed or yeah, know. yeah. Oh, Indeed's a classic one as well. And you yeah. try to tell to them like, especially like RPO firms, right? Like we do a bunch of project RPO work where the company has signed a contract with us to fill a hundred positions for that company. They're not working those kind of positions. Right. <laughs> and, we, and we're the only ones going to be filling those positions. We have an email address for that company, the whole thing, right? Classic RPO. And, and they will go like, nope, you're not the company directly. They would have to reach out to us to allow you to have like, and it's just the rigmarole that you go through is ridiculous. And again, it all comes back to money and spending money and everything else. And so I get that um, from that standpoint, but the student, recruiting thing is just, it's, it's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I wish, and again, I think LinkedIn probably is actually better positioned than anyone to do this. Well, you mentioned that and, on your article, you said LinkedIn yeah. had to drop the ball though early on, I think. Yeah. They had a campus evangelist, a guy I actually knew from Michigan state. So he worked in career services, saw how broke it was. And he started actually in his position at Michigan state. I think the last year he was in position at Michigan state, he visited 80 other universities and spoke to their career services and their students about how they should get on LinkedIn. And eventually like everybody at LinkedIn was like, Hey, who is this guy espousing our product? We should hire him. And they did. And, and so he had a great run there where he was probably doing 150 colleges and universities a year. And yet they never truly built out. And again, what they, cause they, what they couldn't figure out was, well, why can't we get career services just to tell all of their kids to get on LinkedIn? Because what career services figures out right away was, wait a minute, if, if they just get on LinkedIn, they don't need us anymore, then what happens, right? And so it's that transactional kind of mindset versus going, oh my gosh, we didn't have to worry about helping these kids find jobs and they could just go on LinkedIn and have their profile. And then we could actually teach them how to interview, how to set up a profile, all these higher level things. That's really where I think career services should be. And they're so far from that. It's, it's kind of a joke. Yeah. I was thinking back to, uh, you know, the tough side way up, well, they used to be called, I think it was collegegrad.com back in the yeah. day. And I yeah. used them when I was recruiting back in 2015 or 16. And I remember I had the greatest experience ever with a, you know, quote unquote job board, if you will. I was looking for hospitality grads. And uh, they're like, okay, we can get you a bunch of grads overnight. Right. So I said, okay, this is a good test. Let's try this. Boom. Next day, I had 
hundred applicants in my uh, dashboard, all based on uh, you know uh, the, the major they were in, hospitality and, and schools, things like that. Yeah, I love that experience overall. And then, you know the tr- the one I love the tr- way up is a diversity. No, so, yeah, kind everyone of moved has away from that. the whole college right. grad thing almost. <laughs> Um, which well, it's of, hard to, it's so hard to figure out. That's why. Right. And then yeah, so you have to get away from that. Plus I do think like, like brand ambassadors on campus, they would come in and, and they would hire the kids and on campus yeah, and to promote the site to the students. And that's how they kind of grew that way. Um, yeah. That was a pretty good, pretty good model there, but good. No, I do. I do think handshake now is probably better, best position over anybody to kind of truly make this happen. And, and again, I'm excited to see kind of where their roadmap is. Cause I, you know, I've been hearing from high levels in their organization that they're really making some advances and doing some cool things. I think that will help out both employers and students. Um, you know, and, and I, you know, the hard part is this evolution of career services. I do. I remember back in the day when we would call, like we do engineering technical stuff, right. And I could just call Purdue and say to their school of engineering, talk to some admin and say, Hey, this is Tim. I'm over at this company. Here's where we're at. We're looking to hire your grad. They'd say, Oh my gosh, we will, I'm, I'm going to send you an email. It used to be paper, right? I'm going to send you a package. And it was every resume of every upcoming grad. Like they would, through the graduation process, they would actually say, they go, hey, we have 75 mechanical engineering grads that are graduating this year. And they would force them to put a resume together sometimes. And it was all kind of a format resume, but they would kind of force them to put it together. And then they would just send them to us. And then we would contact them and everybody else had the same access. A lot of schools still will do that. Like I'm always like, so if you're out there listening, you like call the schools that you want to work with and just say, Hey, do you have a resume book or can I come on campus or whatever? But it's still so like 1990 ish when it comes to campus recruiting that, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. We should be way, way more advanced than we are. And like I said, the students are the ones that, you know, really need to kind of probably push this and say, Hey, I'm not showing up at these stupid you know, career fairs and shaking hands and getting a pen anymore. Like, this is just dumb. Yeah. I mean, if I was running a career service, I would basically just, I would take it all over myself. I would throw up my own job board in and uh, make, make the yeah. students run it, teach them some skills. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of software out there now. You can do that on your own. Well, you know, they started doing that. And I think that's how like handshakes and those came together. Cause it was always like, well, cause you know, there's high turnover, right. At, at universities, especially like in career services. Cause a lot of times, they're filling positions with kids who are new grads and they're helping a new grad <laughs> find a job. And eventually they just kind of move up within the system. And so there's this constant churn. So to maintain a technology or a job board, you know, there's just, it didn't seem like that was always the best kind of utilization of their time. Now you and I both know there's software out there now that can make that fairly easy and probably, you know, be pretty, you know, it, it, you know, all right, make them quite a bit of money, you know, um, but I, I mean, I, but I think like as an employer, that becomes frustrating because now I have to go, oh, I'm going to post a job at Michigan State. I'm going to post a job at Michigan. I'm going to post a job here. I'm going to post a job here. And I'm paying every single one of these versus the, the job board model that we've become comfortable with, which is, hey, Handshake, I have a job. Here's this, this. You have 75 universities within that kind of general geographic area. You know, can we, can we like, let's put it out there to those, right? And blast that out, which is probably a better way to spend our resources. Yeah. Well, I guess the, the moral of the story here really is to, you know, from if you're a vendor, uh, you know, doing some of this stuff, it's, to me, it's about simplification and, and just making it easier for people to do business together to connect both candidate and employer. And I think a lot of times vendors just kind of get in the way of themselves. Yeah, I think career services too, though, it, it very much acts like a terrorist to employers. Employers can't go, because if you want to say is like, well, wait a minute, what if all Fortune 500 came together and came, went to these universities and said, screw you. We are no longer playing your games. They don't do that because they're scared that they, will have, they won't have access to these kids. And they need these kids for so many of their hires. And so they just kind of play the game like, okay, we'll pay your 20, you know, your $2,000 to come to your stupid spring career fair and show up and hand out stuffed animals or whatever the hell we do. And, and, the career, and somebody in career services is like, oh my gosh, like our spring career fair brings in $500,000. You're like, that's that's the metric you're looking at for success. <laughs> Career service should be promoting every student they have that's about to graduate uh, as much as they can to every employer uh, yeah. around there. So I mean that's the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. So you know, thankfully we have enough tech out there with Indeed and LinkedIn and places like that. You know, handshake that I think kids are 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 getting jobs. I don't. 
it's rare that I run into kids now that are like, I, you know, I just can't find a job. The ones that we've usually run into that are like that are usually like second, third years, like for internships. And they're just like, I cannot find an intern. And then I talked to so many heads of TA and heads of HR at companies that were like, we post our internship jobs and we get nobody to apply. <laughs> and I'm like, how is that? How is that the case? Yeah. My, my daughter's school uh, requires three internships before they graduate. I think that's awesome. But that was pretty I think cool. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. So, well, this has been great, Tim. Great catching up. I think you're going yeah. to uh, Sherm Staffing next week. Yeah, I'll be Sherm Talent and then Sherm, Sherm National and then HR Tech. So I'm in Vegas way too many times over the next two months. It's going to um, be interesting. I guess we all got to wear masks. So. Yeah, mask and then HR tech, you know, hey, came out and said, you got to be vaccinated. So mm -hmm. they're like, hey, we're not going to screw around, which I, you know, I'm fine with like, I, you know, again, I'm not either way on the vaccine, like you make your own personal health choices, like it's your body. Um, I have mine. That was a personal choice I made. Um, I hang out with people that don't have it. And, you know, I, I feel for them, like, especially if they get sick or someone in their family gets sick. Um, so, but I, 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 it's a, don't you think that's a pretty strong move for HR tech yeah. um, to do? Cause I think you are definitely cutting out a big portion of the population when you, when you say that, and, you know, in all of these companies, we've been around this industry a long time, whether you're Sherm or HR tech or anybody, mm -hmm. all those conferences are about making money. And it's pretty rare that they do something like that, that would actually potentially hurt their revenue. Yeah. I think it's, I think they're all going to lose money this year. Uh, it's just, just, they're not going to have the same attendance that's for sure so yeah but i think you have to get back and start doing something right yeah, yeah, show yeah. people it's fine you know so well, i'll be yeah. in uh, vegas so uh cool for tech and uh yeah it's gonna do it again thanks for your time tim yep we'll see you there uh, and talking about this you're always uh full of interesting ideas <laughs> and, and opinions so well, we appreciate it thanks chris that will do it for this episode of the rec tag podcast be sure to follow us on the socials facebook twitter linkedin via the at rec tech media handle see every podcast video and blog we publish Thanks for listening or watching, everyone. And remember, always be recruiting.